Hey guys, Brian with Wrenches and Rides, and we just finished installing a worn 4500S winch into our Can-Am X3 XRS. And what we found is that the winch button on the dash is going to be live and able to move the winch in and out anytime the machine is on. I don't really like that. If I have a passenger that's sitting over here and they reach forward to open something and hit the winch button, or anything that they want or anything anyone does on accident that winch could move in or out. So I want to set that up so that we have an auxiliary switch that has to be turned on in order for this switch to be active. And this is super, super simple. It's going to take 10 minutes. While I'm doing it, I also have a very similar switch that is USB outlet. So we can charge our phone, run a tablet, do whatever we want to on the road. And we're simply going to piggyback off these switches and install them all at once. The switch in the wiring that comes with the worn switch can be used to power all three of these. There's a power supply down at the bottom that you're running switched power from and power leads from and a ground. So all we're gonna do is tap into these top switches. You can see here, if I turn the machine on, you can, you can hear the winch is gonna run. If I pull this red wire out, which is the one I'm gonna run over to the bottom of my auxiliary switch that's gonna power it and then the winch no longer works. We'll run another wire over to this power switch here and it will allow me to turn on the auxiliary switch, allow the power to flow through and then this winch will go. When this auxiliary switch is off, this power, the switch will be dead just like it is now. So we're gonna do a lot of this wiring on the bench and we'll come back and show you. But what we're gonna do here is take this gray wire piggyback it because it is a ground over to the auxiliary switch and the only reason we need a ground on the auxiliary switch is because it's lighted. We'll then piggyback it over to the USB switch or USB input and then we'll do the same with the grounds and then we'll have a second or the same with the power and then we'll have a second power that's going to run from this switch over to the middle of the winch switch so that when this is powered on we have power to the winch. It's going to be simple might look complicated. This is going to take minutes. Let's go to the bench and wire it up. Wiring this stuff up on the bench is by far the easiest. You can set everything out in front of you and see what's going on. We know we have to take a switched power lead from the original worn switch and we need to take a ground from the original worn switch. From there, that's the only two things we're connecting into. Everything else is going to be from this auxiliary switch into this USB power. So the first thing that I'm going to make up just because it's simple, I'm going to create a small wire that's going to go between the auxiliary switch and the worn switch. That just makes sense. It's cake, it's small, it's easy. Might as well get it done quick. Out of the way, one thing's done. So basically what we're gonna do here is wire up a bunch of pigtails. There's nothing that's really supplying a large amount of power, so we don't have to worry about splitting it off and feeding other things. We're gonna feed some small LED lights and some USBs, simple. So we're gonna grab the power from the original switch. It's gonna come in, run the, the lighted power here. We're gonna take that switch power down to the bottom, which is going to feed the bottom pole of the switch. So when we turn it on, it will then go back and feed the original worn switch. And from the bottom, we're also gonna feed our USB. Now with the ground, we're doing super simple. We're just grabbing the ground from the worn switch, 
bringing it over to the top, the grounds for the power on the light, and bringing it over to the USB. This is cake. We're going to jump into the machine at this point in time, hook up our power and grounds, and we can drop these switches in. So inside the machine, we connected up our grounds, and I also connected up our power that's going to daisy chain over. And instead of using a butt connector here, I hate butt connectors, but I also didn't want to solder inside the machine. I put in another clip and I put in a male clip on the inside. So if I ever want to grab power up here, which I know there is power sitting right here, but I have this clip here, it's protected and we can go. So now we'll just take everything apart and install these switches. Okay, we're together. Let's do a quick test run. Turn on the power. All of our lights work, but the auxiliary switch is off. So our worn switch does not work. Turn on the auxiliary switch, and we have complete use of everything. So we are set. Turn the auxiliary switch off. Push these switches in. This one's dead. And that's going to be our setup. Now here we simply have power anytime that it's on. Again, we can hit that, no issue. I like that setup because there's a little bit of safety inside that, that this switch is not powered or nothing is able to happen unless we have our remote hooked up that's in the dash or we have our auxiliary power on. And we also have the benefit of some USBs that are sitting here also. So pretty cool system. Hope this helps you out if you're wiring up your winch and didn't like that this was hot all the time. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. We appreciate it. We also have a channel at workshopaddict.com where we go over tools. Thanks for your time, guys. Have a great day.